My brother Ralphie also has a YouTube channel and having a much more sophisticated setup than I do, he has a remote control for the camera that he uses to turn it on and off and he calls this his clicker, which is odd because clicker actually goes way back to the dawn of remote controls. It's like back to the earliest televisions when you actually had a device that when you pressed it, it made a loud click noise and that was picked up by an ultrasonic transducer and actually used to increment through the small number of channels you had. Is that what he means by clicker? But anyway, if I hold this up, and you should see ultra uh, infrared light in the camera if it's working, but it's not. He had two of them. I got one of them working. Um, this one I'm going to chop up. I'm going to actually turn it into something better. So let me show you the inside. It's very cheap and nasty. It has a sticky label onto a circuit board. There is a small conductive disc in there that is very prone to making a bad connection onto these buttons, which are printed graphite ink, which could also make a bad connection. I shall take these screws out. Two screws hold the circuit board in. They're strategically positioned to keep it in the position of that battery because the little lithium cell, and he did replace the lithium cells, uh, actually connects. Well, hold on, let me, let me, let me just actually take a picture of this so you can see a completely scaled up thing. One moment, please. Here we go, that's better. The lithium cell slides in against this contact. It has the uh, the negative side and the inner negative side pointed down the way. And the positive side is the metal rim around the end. So the bottom contact slides in these, this bottom contact for negative and the rim, as you push it in and click it in, it goes against this spring. Can I show you the spring here? Yes, I can show you the spring, uh, which just pushes back and that makes connection with the battery. It's you know, I suppose it works. It's a very, very cheap arrangement. After that, there is a ubiquitous 8-pin microcontroller with an LED connected directly to it. It's relying on the impedance of the pin. It's got a little switch which seems to toggle just one pin. Um, and it's got the two pads going through to the other side, which are going through to this conductive ink. Uh, though the conductive ink is coming through, that's, a, that's possibly a weakness there. But it's coming through onto the bottom, and then it's sort of it's kind of protected. They've put a resist over it. Um, but where the conductive ink is exposed, that is the switch contact, and that's what the little disc in the front plastic sticker, uh, which is just stuck. Uh, that's what this little conductive disc, which looks as though it's printed. Uh, bridges out to make the connection. They're always notorious. They're really cheap. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to zoom out for a start. I'm going to bring the image up to a better height. Focus-wise, this is where I usually cause everything to go completely out of focus. I think that focused correctly. This is where I have a really huge screen. Uh, I've got further experiments in that regard coming up. It would be handy. So what I'm going to do, Ralph uh, said, make me a clicker and I said, I can make a really big one. And he said, OK, make me a huge one. He doesn't realise how big the clicker is going to be. So I've got this box and I'm going to put a battery pack in it. I'm going to put the circuit board out of this, but replace that crappy switch. If that's what's the problem, it might not be. Even if uh, this doesn't work as a result of that, if there's something else like a failing chip or LED, which is unlikely, what I can do is I can then buy another one and put it into this though, because it's, it's quite amusing. But I'm going to drill a hole in the middle and I did toy with putting this big red button in. I mean, that is about as big as you're going to get. Or is it? Then the temptation was to put this button in, which I'm very tempted. This is a arcade machine button. It's massive. It's designed to be illuminated, but not really practical in this instance. So fortunately, they use a similar mounting arrangement and the switch, which has an LED in it, which I won't be using, uh, is compatible with both. Let me see if I can get that to click into position. There it goes. Click, click, click. That is just jamming. Maybe it's not that compatible, but I will fix that. But there we go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to drill a hole in here and I'm going to drill a hole for this circuit board. I'm going to crop the circuit board down physically and make a little hole here and put the LED in this position here. And the reason for that is because Ralph films his videos on top of a whiskey barrel because it's a whiskey channel and it's got a fair lip at the top. So I think the LED will protrude above that and it means he can sit it on the barrel. And when he hits the button, it should be able to get rough line of sight if it's at the front. 
down to his uh, camera. But we'll sh we shall see what happens. So I shall drill those holes now, and I'll be back shortly. The holes have been drilled, and I've decided to, to go... Although I want to use this big button, I had to swip, swap to a different module. Because the other one, I remember this when I got them in the first place... There's different mouldings. This is a, like a mass-produced clone of a clone of a clone. And likewise, the switches are mass-produced clones of clones. And it means that you find switch arrangements that they're not compatible with. The other one, it was just not compatible at all. This one is compatible, but it's going to need glued in because it's very loose. These are supposed to just click in decisively with a sort of interference fit, and it's not doing that. It doesn't matter. We shall improvise. So I'm going to put the switch in from the correct side and put the lock nut on. The switch is actually designed to be recessed into a panel, but in this case it's not. And I'm going to tighten it up, just finger tight, that's going to be the big button sticking up, that's looking all right, I think that's going to be big enough for Ralphie. I've taken the LED out, the LED incidentally is just a little plastic cup with little tabs at the end. And they've soldered a resistor onto one lead of the LED, the other lead is just left full length, and they push it in, and they wrap the LED lead around one of these legs, and the resistor lead around the others, and that, uh, depending on the voltage required, if it's 5 volt or 12 volt, they just change the resistor. But it's just a standard straw hat LED in there. It still does a decent job of illumination. Let me demonstrate that. I should demonstrate it. Uh, hopefully these are the... So that is... Uh, about 20 milliamps, okay. So if I shove that inside the button, it does a decent-ish job of making it light, but not as bright as uh, the old ones used to be. It would actually be better if I actually put it into this. If I put it into this little holder, find out which connections are which, that'll push it right up to the end where it's supposed to be. One moment, please. I've already been distracted. So that's the LED lit now, 20 milliamps, if I put that in, it's, it makes it light, it's not super bright, is it? One LED is not enough. Uh, likewise, the same LED can be mounted, the same holder can be mounted into this housing. And does a much better job with illumination. Still not super mega bright, but then we are competing with studio type lighting here. So, uh, yes. Flash, 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 flash. Play now. Okay, distraction over. Let's mount the circuit board. I've drilled a small hole in the front of this for the 3mm LED. I have scrubbed the back so I could get a decent uh, fixing surface for this double-sided tape. And it's worth noting that as I did that, the graphite ink just spread everywhere, and I had to clean this with solvent afterwards. It really is a very loose graphite ink. So that makes me wonder if part of the problem with these keypads is squishing of the graphite between the contacts, giving problems. I'm going to put this in. I'm not sure if it's the correct thing to do at this point, and actually it's not the correct thing, but I've started, so I'll finish. I'm wondering how I'm going to get a decent connection onto these pads because they have the residual of the graphite on them. I'm going to try scraping some of that off now. One of the things that also came to mind here with this graphite, I shall try flowing solder and it might not work. If you look at the circuit board, the two graphite connections going through to the button other side are across two separate pins. They're not referenced. Normally, with like say for instance this switch, it's actually pulling to either negative or positive on this input. And with these ones, I expect the same thing, but it does suggest this may be a dedicated infrared remote control chip with the facility to drive that LED at high current and also uh, to drive a small matrix for like multiple inputs, maybe about, say for instance, four or five buttons. I'm not really sure. I'm going to scrub that pad again, then I'm going to try flowing soda in it. If the soda doesn't flow in it, I'll have to clean it more because the graphite may actually cause an issue there. I shall soon find out. I shall try soldering it right now. If the worst comes to the worst, I can delicately tack directly onto the circuit board pins. What's going to happen here? Is it going to take solder in that pin? It's kind of taking solder in that pin. It's, it's not inspiring. What about here? 
Um, are you impressed with that? I'm not overly impressed with that. No, I'm not. I've actually just wiped the pad right off. Excellent. Right, on to the chip it's going then. Oh, this is where it's going to get very, very footry. Do you really want to see me screwing up? Yes, you do. Right, tell you what, let's do that. Let's screw up. So I'm going to use purple wires leading up to the positive and negative, not the positive and negative, but the switch. So I'm going to tin them. And I'm going to flood some solder onto that, uh, the pins of that uh, chip. This is where I should really zoom down. Let's see if we can uh, screw this up royally. So I'm going to twist these wires and I'm going to pre-tin them. Then I'm going to put a little bit of flux on that chip. I'm going to flow some solder on and hopefully not completely make a mess of this. But you know what? If I do, I do. Ralph's getting a new big button clicker no matter what happens. I'm twisting the wire on this and it's just not twisting it. It smacks of that copper coated aluminium, but it's not. This is proper copper. Why is it doing that? It's just maybe I'm twisting it in the wrong direction for its original twist. So let's tin that wire. Whereupon the insulation immediately recoils back as it so often does. And I shall attempt to flow some solder down onto these pads, which is just a disaster with this size of solder iron. Yes, it is a disaster with this size of solder iron, but I have no regrets. Then I'm going to splooge some flux on. Watch me squirt far too much flux out of this. I'm going to do a... I'm going to put at least one micropole of flux on this. Where a pole in flux measurements is approximately one litre. So uh, let's see if I can flow this down. Is this going to work? Yeah. The, what I don't want to do is bridge it onto the wires next to it. I think that may have actually just gone on. Is the other one going to go on, or is it going to just ruin the whole party? The other one... Soldered on too. Wow. My hit and run soldering is actually getting quite good. I'm going to actually look at that. <clears throat> With a magnifying glass, and the magnifying glass says that's pretty damn good, I have to say. I mean, no it's not, but it's pretty damn good. Now I'm going to add that. The, so this is going up to the button. So I'll show. Uh, I'll crop these the same length and strip them. Now this is where it would have been really handy if I had Ralph's camera here to test this on. But Ralph can test that in his own channel. I can at the very least see on this camera if the infrared's coming out because most cameras can see the infrared as a sort of dull, purpley glow because it just hits at least some part of their spectrum. Uh, what do I want here? I want red and black. I want red and black. So maybe I should put this into the battery holder first. Let's zoom back out for this because uh, so you can see what's happening. For the battery holder, I've chosen a Poundland Special. I've chosen one of these little uh, holders. I'm going to remove the switch completely because I don't want the switch in there. So I shall desolder that. Let's just wipe that out using inappropriate means. And I shall desolder that contact. And I shall also hike this out. Excellent. And desolder the, the wires off them. Like this. That way the switch is not going to give problems. That's getting very hot. This is not surprising because I'm holding a solder iron against it. Chav. These are quite nice. These are from Poundland. They actually look okay. Uh, I'm now going to solder the negative wire onto this one. So let's strip this. If you don't want to see this, you're welcome to fast forward at any point. It's the joy of YouTube. Freedom of viewing control. I'm not sure that many people would choose to add such a massive button onto their camera right enough. Let's sort of this on long ways. Is this how I want to do it? Probably not, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, so that's a negative 
and I shall solder this one onto the positive. Strip and solder. I think Ralph is, what is that? He's using a cannon. Yep. The thing says for cannon. It's, it's got the cannon logo, but it says for cannon, meaning it's just a clone. Ralph bought it thinking it was the real thing, as he does, as many people on YouTube do, on eBay do, buying the deceptively convincing clones. Let's see if I can not burn my fingers this time by doing this. That's me mating uh, lead-based solder onto lead-free solder. Nice. It's a hybrid made in heaven. Now I'm going to put that contact back in. I'm going to fold that down. I'm going to loop the wire. Oh, what where can I loop it through? I shall shove it through the hole. So that's a positive. I'll just ram it down there. And the negative. I shall put in here. I might have to just kink that down just a little bit. And shove that in there. Not the best battery holder, but let's face it, it's not worse than the original one, which was a spring against a, a, two, a CR2032 battery. I guess the chip is optimised for that low voltage, and it's so close to the LED voltage that it'll be able to drive that without current limiting resistors just by the sort of MOSFET impedance. Okay, let's pop that through there. Then it's decided to root itself. That's okay. Or route itself. Let's shove those in. Excellent. Right here. So that is the battery holder. Let's get these wires. And the battery holder is going to go in the base wherever it fits, really. So I shall now crop these wires to roughly... Actually, I shall keep them at the length they are. That seems reasonable enough. And I've marked the connections with dots on this just to uh, to remember where they go. I wonder if Ralph's going to be overly dramatic with this. That's assuming it works. He'll be over dramatic if it doesn't. Ralph's always over dramatic. He likes drama. I was going to say something else there, but I thought that is bitchy brotherhoodness, so I won't. Mumble, mumble, attention seeking queen, mumble, mumble. Okie dokie, so that's the power for that. I don't have batteries here, but I will have batteries in a moment. Uh, let's put this switch in, and I'm going to glue this switch at some point, but initially I shall just uh, slot it in like that. Yeah, that's going to require a bit of tweaking, or I'm going to try other switches as well. Hmm, not liking that. The last thing I want is it feeling, because then Ralph will just rip the piss out of me. So, the micro switch, ignore the, ignoring the two wings at the side there for the, the lamp inside, which is traditionally tungsten, but in this case LED. You've got the common contact at the back, and you've got the normally closed up here, and then the normally open here. And when you push the button down, it clicks the contact, clicks down between them. So we need these two contacts here. So I'm going to flow some soda onto them. I did not like the way that felt. It didn't seem like it was clicking properly. So I think I may end up changing the switch. I'll do this afterwards because it's going to be like gluing switches and changing them is just like, it's not, it's not fun to watch. Watching glue dry is never fun. So tinning these wires. Crop them down. Just a little tad. Making sure I don't crop them into the container. And then I shall tack them onto here. And then stuff them out the way. Professional. So that's one wire tacked on. And another wire tacked on. You used to find in the, uh, some slot machines you used to find the uh, the proper crimp terminals in these. And the other ones you used to just find them loosely soldered on. I suppose each has its benefits. The micro switches do seem to tolerate the soldering quite well. Okie dokie. That is it. I'm going to get some batteries, which are just through the next room.
Poundland's finest Kodak who went bust alkaline cells. From the brand sellers. Uh, let's hope we get the priority right. I think I got a priority right. Is this going to work? Mmm, feels a nice switch actually. It feels really chunky and clunky. That'll suit Ralph to a T. It's a set of also used as game show switches, so is it going to transmit? Well, that's a bit disappointing. It's not. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to investigate this further. Is there a further problem with these? Is there something I don't know about these little remote controls? After a while, they automatically fail. Don't know. Is it that little switch there? Is, or is this camera not sensitive infrared? I may actually have to test this in Ralph's actual camera. I'll get him to bring the camera across. It may just not be picking up the infrared. But uh, so far, right, okay, we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens. I think I'm going to reflow all these solder points as well and see if I can find anything wrong with this because I, I would have thought I'd have been able to see the infrared. Right, tell you what, one moment, please. Problem solved, at least I think it is. Can you see it flashing now in the middle? If you take a look here, you'll see that very brief flash. I think it just sends a single burst of a single code. I was expecting it to be a continuous stream, but perhaps I was wrong. Only one way to find out, and that is to give it to Ralph. So uh, I'll let you know what happens in the description down below once, uh, once Ralph has tested it out properly. But now I shall put it together. One moment, please. So to stick the batteries into this, I'm going to use this typical, uh, it's a really common thing, it's a abrasive pen. You get them in brass wool, you get them in uh, steel wool in this case, and you get them in fiberglass. And I find it really useful just to use it to scour up the plastic, because that gives a much better key for the double-sided tape. So I'm going to use a bit of foam double-sided tape in this. And likewise, he said, wiping your greasy fingers, which doesn't help. The back of this, I'm just going to put a pattern on it. I'm just going to swirl it around just to give, give it a sort of rougher texture as well because it's always tricky sticking plastics. They have that waxiness. The plasticizer can come out of them and it can cause uh, problems with adhesion. Sometimes it's better just to actually put in foam pads uh, that press things into a secure position. So I'm going to stick some tape in here. Because there are channels already in the side of that box, I'm going to use just a couple of bits of double-sided tape. Wow, it feels all Blue Peter again. Blue Peter. A kid's show in the UK in the past. So I'm going to stick one pad in there and one pad in there. And then work out. I'll peel these uh, covers off, the protective layers to reveal the adhesive. And then, I'm going to work out which way around that battery pack's going to go. Uh, this could be... That could be there. Yeah, that looks alright. I'll put it in this way. Fitting in with all the other hardware in here that kind of gets in the way. Is that going to work? I might need, have to need some add some extra layers of tape. No, it seems to have stuck. So all I need to do now is pop it together. And then give it to Ralph for testing and see, uh, see how he gets on with his new remote control button for his camera. Is it going to be visible? It really is. It's such a brief glimmer, it's not going to be visible. That's what the problem before. I had to change the, seven, the sensitivity because it just couldn't detect it. And it's not detecting it again. Uh, but that's just because it's that very brief low intensity pulse of uh, uh, infrared. To check that, I put a visible LED in it and you could see the brief flash. Another thing I did was I stuck the power rails. There is a position for a capacitor there. I stuck a little electrolytic capacitor across it just because most uh, of these uh, remote controls do have that. And uh, I have to wash the flux out of that. But uh, they usually have a little capacitor locally for decoupling purposes, but that one didn't. They'd skimped. But there we go. That is Ralphie's new clicker. It's huge. It's an enormous big red button that he can't really miss to turn his camera on and off. So I'd say that's probably a good result, but Ralph will be the final judge of that.